This video will discuss function trees and morphological matrices with you, and we'll begin by talking about the purpose of a function tree. The purpose of a function tree is to generate a graphical representation of a system in terms of, it, of its functional component breakdown. So you look at the functions that a particular device, mechanism, or machine has to perform and list those functions and represent them in relation to one another in this function tree. And so as an example, here we have uh, the function of washing dishes and we're going to identify all of the inputs that are required to be transformed through this functional analysis into the output of clean dishes. And you'll notice the arrows incoming to the function. We have mechanical components and electrical components, and so this could be the generic representation of any particular device, but in this case we're going to apply it to a machine that will wash dishes. And generally the inputs that are being transformed can be categorized as forces, materials, or energy and those electrical and mechanical components would be those things that would enable you to transform the inputs into the required output in this case the output being uh, clean dishes so let's look at some of the required functions for a dishwasher and uh, one of those functions would well be something like hold the dishes we need to accept water into that system, accept power into the system. Somehow we need to devise ways to contain the water. We need ways to dry the dishes and we need ways to dispose of wastewater. So the inputs in that case might be things like human energy where you're putting the dishes into this machine that cleans dishes. Obviously the dirty dishes would be uh, an input, uh, detergent, water, you're going to need some source of energy to drive the power system of the dishwasher, and the output would be clean dishes. So we have just a few of the required functions listed here, and in a function tree it might look something like this, and you'll notice those top level functions are the overall functions that would describe the absolute necessities associated with washing dishes. So we need to be able to hold the dishes, we need a way to contain the water, a way to receive water or accept water into that system, a way to get rid of it or dispose of it. We need a way to power the dishwasher and to dry the dishes. And then we have the next level of functions. We're starting to break each of these major function functions into sub-functions. And so in holding dishes we need to find a way to secure the position of the dishes to hold them steady. Uh, we need to provide enough adequate spacing to ensure that the dishes get clean and there might even be uh, more than that. Uh, contain water we need to think about uh, ways to prevent leaks within our system. Uh, we need to find ways to separate the dirty uh, water from the clean water. Uh, in terms of accepting water, we might be looking at how to control the volume of the water, how to control the flow rate, and so forth. So the purpose of this function tree is to show you the major functions and to break down those major functions into sub-functions that would enable us to achieve the overall function of washing dishes. So this is a function tree in that it shows the breakdown of the overall functions that are required to achieve uh, the one top level function in this case of washing dishes. So once we've done that, and this is absolutely necessary, identifying the functions that you have to, to your system has to perform before you can devise what's called a morphological matrix. And the purpose of a morphological matrix is to help us generate ideas for meeting these functional requirements. And then to combine those different ideas for functional requirements uh, into several different possibilities for concepts. So again, uh, we want to hold the dishes, uh, accept water, accept power, contain the water, dry the dishes, and dispose of wastewater. So, for example, we might think of various ways to hold the dishes. We might decide to use racks, or we might even use drawers or trays. You might even think of something like a Lazy Susan kind of idea, where the dishes are literally um, put into some type of rotational device. 
in terms of accepting water, we could look at feeding the water through uh, gravity. We could actually have a pump. We might even think about uh, hooking up this dishwasher to uh, a sink. Uh, we could accept power from the grid or batteries. We might be generating power through solar panels. We might even think about just a, using um, a gas generator. Um, in terms of containing the water, you see all the ideas there, talking about sealing various uh, pieces together in a single compartment, having one big giant seamless unit um, that contains the water. We might even think about ways to line a container to keep the, the water within it, and so forth. And so you can see the purpose of this morphological matrix is to take those functions and think of different ideas for uh, meeting those functions. So the functions themselves you could describe as verbs and the ideas uh, as nouns. So our functional ideas are things that we want the device to do and the ideas, of course, are the ways that we want to achieve those overall functions. So the purpose of a morphological matrix is to generate multiple ideas and to use combination of ideas to generate concepts. So now let's see how we can use these morphological matrices to actually generate numerous concepts. So we might say, okay, well our first design is in terms of holding dishes, achieving that function, we've decided to use racks. Uh, as for accepting water into the system, we're going to pump water in from a source. Uh, we're going to uh, use electricity from the grid, it's readily available. We're going to use a seamless one unit um, container to contain the water. We're going to drip dry the dishes and we'll use some type of vacuum pump to dispose of the waste. So that combination of different ideas for those critical functions would then be one uh, idea for a concept. And then a second idea might be to, as opposed to using racks, let's look at the possibility of using, say, uh, a drawered unit and hooking up to the sink to receive water. Uh, maybe power the system using batteries and we're going to line um, maybe a container with some type of uh, water resistant uh, cloth or other type of um, device. As far as drying the dishes, maybe we're looking at heating and disposing of the wastewater. We might want to apply some kind of chemical treatment for doing that. And so this would be a second concept and you can see how we could take additional combinations of ideas to generate numerous other uh, concepts using these morphological matrices. So in summary, function trees help us identify the necessary functions to make a device achieve its performance requirements and morphological matrices uses those same functions to help us think of different ideas that we combine to create numerous concepts.